So project three is due right now. Hopefully that's already been submitted. Today is our review day for test number one. It will be brief. Test number one, there's a window for you to take it. So see the syllabus calendar for the exact dates where you're gonna take um, test number one. Uh, this coming semester, um, you're going to make an appointment to take the test at some proctored location uh, that I agree to. The most common proctored location right now is the GCC Testing Center. There's information in the packet about um, how to contact them and make an appointment. And uh, we'll, we'll show you the phone number during the video for today's class. So uh, test number one is coming up ASAP. Um, Technically, the moment you finish that test is when I'm assigning project four. If you have time to think about the project before you take the test, all the better, but I'd encourage you to start thinking about that project as soon as you are able to. Okay, so let's take a look at the notes. So this is class 12, uh, sorry, class 11, but the uh, test is coming up next class. Project four, not really assigned until after the test, but start working on it if you have time. Number one, subject areas for the test focuses exponential and logarithmic functions and more specifically uh, I'm going to list some of the details for those two things for exponential functions modeling situations writing formulas in either form make sure you're clear on what I mean when I say either form you should know what a growth factor is what the percent growth rate is what the continuous percent growth rate is remember there's lots of vocabulary happening here solving exponential equations compound interest doubling time and half-life logarithms you should be able to evaluate them simplify expressions involving logs use them to work with exponential functions work with logarithmic scales like pH or decibel levels we also talked about plotting things on logarithmic scales and orders of magnitude additionally we covered functions and some basic properties of functions we talked about average rate of change we did linear functions before we did exponential functions. We modeled with linear functions. And then we finished up this uh, material for test one with inverse and composite functions. There is a much more detailed list of that information. So to find that, um, that detailed list of the material that's on the test, you're going to go to our Moodle site. You're going to find the box that says material for the first test. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a folder that says sample, sample test number one materials. And inside of that folder, you'll find a few different documents. So uh, first thing we're going to look at is the study guide for test one. So click on that and it will look like this. It's a very detailed list, much more detailed than the list we just read through, of the things that I'd like you to be able to do if you're going to excel on our coming test. So go through that list of 25, put check marks next to the things you know how to do, question marks next to the ones you're not sure about, and get those questions answered before the test. There's also a list of uh, resources for the test, including some sample test problems. So what are those sample test problems? Well, go back to our Moodle page and right in here, you'll see it says sample test problems for test number one blank, and then the same thing but solutions. So I've pulled up those two documents. Here's the blank one, uh, and it's just a whole bunch of pages, 14 pages of problems and then an answer key at the end. And then additionally, there's the sample test one solutions, which I will pull up briefly, which is right here, which is my full color solutions to these problems. So you've got the blank version and you've got the solutions version, so you can check your work afterwards. And additionally, it says that uh, if you want, you can look at videos of me going through all of the problems in this document right here, all of the sample test problems for test one, and I've got videos for the future tests as well. So it tells you right here how to find the videos. You go to YouTube and you look for phrases like this one, no spaces, 108 sample test one, problem four, for example. You can change that number right there and it will find you the video to the corresponding problem. There's also a hyperlink right here to the actual playlist of me going through all of the problems in that um, on the sample test. Additionally, only for test number one, I've got one more document called even more sample test number one problems. These are from Kelly, a former colleague of mine. There is an answer key. I don't have videos for them. I'm not planning on making videos for them anytime soon, but there is an answer key at the end, which is something. So uh, work through all of these. If you still have time and motivation, work through as many of these as you can. Ask lots of questions if you have any of them, but certainly you need to go through the, the sample test problems in your preparations. Okay, uh, things to know about the test. You will be able to use the exponential and logarithmic properties reference sheet. You're gonna find it on Moodle. So let's find it on Moodle. 
So if you go to Moodle and you go up to this top box here, you'll find a folder that says Reference Sheets. And inside of there, you'll find a whole slew of documents. So the first one said it's a reference sheet not allowed on any tests called Fitting Curves to Data. We talked about that a little bit during um, one of our earlier classes. We're going to skip down to this reference sheet for test one, which is uh, the Exponential and Logarithmic Properties reference sheet. So you can open that. It's a PDF. You can check it out. And, um, and you can use that with you on the test, the whole test. Um, and additionally, uh, besides that reference sheet, you can make up a one-page reference sheet of notes uh, for yourself. You can't use a textbook or any other notes, but this document that you create, you can write anything you want on it, including um, sample test problems or homework problems or definitions or formulas or lyrics to your favorite song if you need that to stay motivated during the test. Anything you want front and back on a standard eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. Um, you'll mostly be able to use calculators, but there will be a short no calculator section. No textbook or other notes are allowed for any part of the test. During the no calculator section, you are allowed to use your reference sheet, um, uh, both my reference sheet and the one that you create. The test is intended to be a one hour test. I use a relaxed time limit on tests. Anyone can have extra time to take the test. You can take up to two hours for the test. So you're going to call this number right here, which is the GCC Testing Center, and you're going to make a two-hour appointment to take the test. If you finish early, no problem, but make that two-hour appointment. And make sure you've got a clear block of two hours of time so that if you need more than the one hour, then you have it. Once you leave that testing center, you can't come back. Uh, you can't say, I only had an hour, and I need to come back and take it another time. You've got to do the whole thing in one shot. Okay, uh, if you um, are concerned you may need more time or you have accommodations for more time, talk to me as soon as possible. I encourage you to show all work on the test. The more you can clearly demonstrate your understanding of the material, the better your chances for partial credit. Um, so solitary answers, whether they're right or wrong, will often get little or no credit. It's really about showing your work, so do that as much as possible. Uh, if you can't take the test at GCC in our testing center, you need to contact me ASAP to make alternate arrangements. There is an assignment due the class after the test, and it follows, and there is a very important survey that you're going to complete as part of this assignment. So right now you're thinking about the test and potentially thinking about project number four, which isn't officially assigned until right after you take the test, but look, think about it soon. But uh, as soon as you have um, finished the test, you're going to want to start working on the next assignment. So there's a reading assignment, that's typical. There are questions of the day, that's typical. There's think about this project, you're starting project four, that's typical. What is atypical is this survey. And the survey appears on the next page. You're gonna either type up and email me your answers or you can scan it and uh, email it to me that way or you can fill it in by hand and put it under my door. But uh, get that to me as soon as you can. It is officially due uh, the class after the test, which is right there. So whatever date you see there, that's when I want those answers by. But even if you get them to me a couple of days late, it's better that you get them to me at all than just not to not get them to me, period. Okay, so the survey itself is on the next two pages, actually. There's lots of fill in the blanks and short answers, and then some kind of more free response stuff. So please get those to me um, as soon as you can. Okay, so I think that's it for the review. You have lots of resources at your disposal. If you have questions about anything at all, then please ask.